So again, everyone, welcome to Strategies for Enhancing Instructor Presence. All right, I think we can go ahead and kind of take a look at some of our goals for this session. So in this workshop, you'll want to discover some practical strategies for communicating effectively with your students, showing your students that you're present, and then ways in which you can support your students' overall course success. And we can also start with some icebreakers. So I think that's a good idea. Welcome, Kim. Let's see, we have another person in the session. So if you wouldn't mind, and again, you can type this into the chat, or if you prefer the microphone, that's up to you as well. Uh, but let, me, let us know your name, what it is that you teach, and in your opinion, what you think makes a strong, uh, positive teacher impression. Well, I can go first. Um, my name is Rashmi, and I'm an incoming graduate student at NIU's Biological Sciences Department, and I will be a teaching assistant this fall coming semester. Um, I don't know what I will be assigned to quite yet, but it will probably be like one of the introductory biology biology courses. Um, and what makes a strong positive teacher impression? Um, just from my, my own like personal communication efforts and like being a student, what I've found valuable in teachers is anyone who's very um, accepting of me or can be very relatable, try, like tries to, um, you know, get down to our, like a student's level versus like, you know, talking down to them. Um, I think it makes a really great impression if a instructor can really like connect with you and talk to you at your level and be very supportive that way. Great. Thank you, Rasmi, and welcome. I hope you get to attend more of our workshops as well. That sounds exciting. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great. Um, my name is Elise, and um, I teach in the nursing department. Um, I am t I teach clinical mostly. I've been teaching. I just started teaching in the RNWS program that they have there. Sorry, you can hear my child and his friend. Um, and yeah, I think too when you are. Um, I actually just finished. I'll graduate this May with my DMP degree, so I've been really understanding of other students and other responsibilities. So I think that is helpful as well. Great, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And don't worry about any of the noise. It happens with all of us. I'm Kim okay. also responded in the chat here, so I can read that to you. Kim is an instructor in the Department of Communication and teaches introductory to public speaking. And your definition or what you think makes a strong, positive teacher impression is caring, clear, constructive communication uh, makes a nice impression. Thank you. I just always think it's such a good idea to to see you know what stands out to us about our instructors you know instead of just always thinking about what can we what can we improve but we can also identify the things that work really well um, so rashmi kind of indicated you know meeting students halfway uh, meeting them where they're at instead of talking down to them you know we've got things in here about constructive uh, feedback and also just being cognizant of the many roles that our students have inside our classroom and outside of it Thank you. Um, I do have just this one other question for you. So today's workshop, we're going to take a look at techniques that you can use, whether you are um, teaching face-to-face, -face, online, or in a hybrid format. But I'm curious to hear um, what you think you'll be teaching in, which format. And then if you wouldn't mind telling me um, how you approach one of the following. How do you communicate effectively with your students or how do you show them that you're present? And the last one here is how do you support your students overall success? So you can kind of pick and choose of those what stands out to you. Um, so Rashmi again. Uh, I don't know what I'll be teaching exactly, but um, most likely, if it has a lab component, that will be face-to-face. -face. And if it's a lecture component, it might be online. So most likely, a hybrid format might be a possibility for the fall. 
um, teaching assistants. Um, in terms of like how I work would work with students, just knowing from my previous like experience as a student or in the job, like in the workforce, for example. Um, one of the things that I think is very key is just being able to be accommodating. And so like, I guess for like supporting your student success, maybe I would try to um, understand like what student schedules are like and if they are, you know, if they come to me saying they need more time on an assignment or just need some extra resources or help, um, I have to like be willing and flexible to allow for that because, you know, everyone has your whole lives aside from school. So you gotta be accepting of that. Wonderful, thank you. It, it sounds like you're already building up these, you know, practices and best teaching strategies, even though you're not entirely sure which format you're going to be teaching in. So I think that's a very effective policy. Kim or Elise, would either of you care to chime in? All right, I see Kim's response here in the chat. Um, so you teach mostly face-to-face, -face, um, some online asynchronous sections, and you feel most effective teaching face-to-face. -face. Okay, and you're just looking for tips for teaching online to make yourself more present. Perfect, wonderful. I'm glad we can speak to kind of all of those different modalities. So we'll, we'll get into that. And we'll be sure to address some of the different technologies that you can also use um, to help you with that. And Elise says that you teach a little bit of face-to-face -face and online as well. Okay. Great. So I think at this stage we can go ahead and just take a look at what is instructor presence. So, you know, before we can discuss the strategies for enhancing instructor presence, we actually need to define it and figure out what it means. So in simple terms, it basically means that the instructor is being there for your class. It means that your students see you as an accessible and real person, um, someone who's there to help them with their learning. So in other words, instructor presence is creating the perception for your students that you are the real person right there with them in, in that process of learning and that they can approach you for help when they need it. It's nothing very fancy. Um, one of the pitfalls that we try to uh, discourage or to try to avoid is this kind of set it and forget it mentality. And it's this mindset where you're going to set up your course and essentially forget about certain aspects um, once you've actually put something in place. But the problem with this mindset is that it can have a detrimental effect on student success and teaching efficacy. So it's important for students to see faculty that are engaged and present in the course and active participation uh, by that faculty helps students keep going with their learning process. Um, Additionally, we want faculty to evaluate their course along the way and make adjustments so that it demonstrates to students that you are progressing and, and engaging with them towards those stated learning outcomes. We don't want you just to create one blanket policy and never revisit it. So go ahead and feel free to kind of change directions throughout your course if you sense that something could be improved. So we do have three components of the instructor presence. We have persona, social, and instructional. So the persona is basically the instructor's personality and teaching style. And this is what gives your students an impression of who you are, and it helps them feel more connected to you as their instructor. So you can communicate this throughout the duration of your course, but some ways that you can help kind of instill this, this personable you know, presence in your class is to start with a course welcome message. So as soon as you open your course, and some people like to open their course a day early, uh, go ahead and send a welcome message to your students and invite them into your class. You know, if you have a getting started module in Blackboard, that might be something you want to, to alert them to. You can also think about doing things like module overviews. 
a nice way to do that is to record, you know, a quick two to three minute message for your students so they can either see you uh, visually if you have your webcam on or they can just hear your voice if it's only audio. Uh, but it, it again establishes you as a person instead of a, a robot. So, uh, you know, Kim, I think you were mentioning you, you were looking for ways to do that online. That's a, a great way to help your students get to know you. The social presence is more about community building. So in other words, that's how you connect with students and vice versa. It also represents how students connect with each other uh, to create a sense of classroom community. And so you're going to want to facilitate and provide opportunities for those connections to happen. You want to keep your students engaged in your course and, and ultimately increase their chances of success. And so this does mean being responsive through timely communication and also expecting them to do the same in return. And we'll talk a little bit more about those strategies, I promise. And then the instructional presence is essentially your role in facilitating students' learning experiences in the course. So to enhance your presence through instruction, you might consider using multimodal learning materials. This could be things like visual images, such as pictures, you could use video, audio, if you wanna bring in some podcasts and also some written communication. You could even provide your students uh, with a weekly video of yourself explaining what they can expect from the course and the assignments and how they can navigate that week's uh, lessons and activities. So this is going to lead kind of into our first topic here which is creating and sustaining connections in your class. So some examples of ways to create and sustain connections include developing an introductory uh, discussion forum. I find this particularly helpful uh, for a variety of reasons. I know this became um, a prevalent way to, to start communications and courses, particularly during the pandemic. Um, but what, we, what we've noticed is that if you offer discussion forums as a way for students to introduce themselves, some of your more introverted students are, are more likely to engage and connect. We also found that ESL learners or you know, English as second language students were again, more likely to participate. And so we're looking for ways to engage our students that don't just require them to speak up verbally in class. So this is something that you may want to consider. Even if you're in a face-to-face -face environment, you can still utilize Blackboard for this. Um, if you do this online, you can encourage your students to share photos or videos um, to help them create connections with their peers. I would say you can encourage this. You probably don't want to require it, um, you know, as it could be an equity concern. And finally, you can require, though, that peers respond to to the other students in the class um, so that they get to know each other. So that part you could, you could mandate. Another way to create and sustain connections in a course is to hold uh, a synchronous online session. And we always say this for the, since we're looking at all modalities here, even if you're teaching um, a primarily asynchronous online course, you might at least wanna have one session early on where your students can see you and get to know you. They can hear your voice, they can see your face. Um, and they can interact with you so that if they have questions later on dur during the course, then they know who you are and they can identify you. You can also ask your students to participate in um, some icebreaker activities. And this can also help them make, maybe feel more comfortable with you and with their class. So for example, they may get together and suggest that they create a group chat on social media so they can talk to each other outside of a, a typical classroom environment. You can also ask your students to help compile resources, uh, which I think I'll bring up in just a little bit here. Uh, but this is also a way to bring them into the, the class conversation um, and get them familiar with interacting with one another. And lastly, you might consider using a welcome assignment or a survey so you can ask your students um, how you can best serve them. So they might feel more inclined to privately discuss some of their needs or challenges and goals, and then they can tell you, you know, how they, they see you uh, helping them in those manners. So 
you know, we have another another slide up here for this, but um, one way that you can engage students with your course is to connect the course material to the students' personal interests. So it's another reason to have those icebreaker activities there. You can use those opportunities you've created just to get to know your students. And basically you're leveraging that information into connecting students' interests to your learning materials, activities, and graded assessments. You can also share your own interests with your students as well. And so that'll go again back to that persona so that they see you as a actual person. And another way to engage students is to show them how course materials are relevant to their academic lives. So, you know, think about what expectations do you have in your course that students will be expected to follow across their college careers? Are there any types of skills and knowledge that will transfer to other courses? And how do you help your students make their own connections between your course and their other college coursework? So, I think I went too far. Sorry about that. Uh, finally, you may want to emphasize the relevance of your course to um, students' future professional lives as well. So you may want to engage them with learning in your course. You can help students create connections um, and think about how their, their learning could apply to their future professional goals. So, you know, this goes back again to, to those transferable skills. And so another way you can help to create connections to future professions is by connecting course policies to potentially uh, professional expectations. We know that our students are more likely to retain their knowledge if they can find relevance in, in their coursework as to how it connects to their own lives. Um, so I say that with the caveat, just be sure that your expectations accurately reflect the workplace. And keep in mind that students are still in college, uh, which is a learning um, and not a professional environment. Now I'll go back to the last slide. So in addition to creating connections within your course, you're going to want to communicate uh, with your students fairly frequently, and you have some different options on how you can do that. So you can remind your students of upcoming deadlines uh, with a weekly announcement or follow-up announcements. And you'll see up here on your screen, this is a Blackboard Ultra course. So um, you may have received the notification that in about a year or so, we're going to be moving exclusively to Ultra. Um, so that's what a lot of this technology will demonstrate for you today. You can um, create an announcement and then you can also send it as an email. So um, it's a nice way for students to, to get the information. They'll see it on their screen as soon as they log into their course, um, but they'll also get an email alert as well. You might consider sending out reminders about your office hours um, and letting them know how do you structure your your office hours? Are you doing virtual office hours? Is it face-to-face? Uh, -face? Do they have to schedule it in advance or do you just have open hours for drop-in? Um, there is no right or wrong answer, but they will just want to know whatever your policy is. You can post uh, weekly module introductions in your Blackboard course. So that'll help them think about the overview of what they're gonna be doing for the week. And you can post an occasional uh, midweek motivation message. This is particularly helpful if you have maybe an extended period of time for students to work on a large assessment. For instance, if they get to spend a couple of weeks uh, preparing for a large presentation, you might want to send them a reminder message somewhere along the line just to let them know that you're available. Uh, with all that being said, you do want to be uh, mindful of the frequency of your communications. So just be be careful of overkill. Um, if you post too much, students might start to, to kind of glaze over your communications. So in addition to uh, posting your announcements, you can use a messaging tool in Blackboard Ultra, which is really nice. Um, this allows you some different options. You can send a message to everybody in the course. You could send it just to a select handful or a singular student. Um, then the student can access the message a couple of different ways. They can actually see it um, in their message inbox when they come into the course, or you can also um, check the box below 
which sends an email to that person's, uh, or it sends a message to that person's email. So that's a handy feature. Um, it's pretty easy to find. It's right at the top of the course. So that may come in handy for you. You also want to um, think about your, your timely feedback. Um, another important component to communicating with students is creating um, a structure for how often and when students can expect to hear from you. So for more of the smaller formative assessments and learning activities, your feedback is going to help students learn and grow um, and, and so that they're getting in kind of that practice experience before their larger summative assessments. Um, and as far as the summative assessments go, it helps students understand their grade. Summative assessments typically account for a larger portion of their overall course grade. So they're going to want to know why they received the, the grade that they did. Um, and again, you want to be timely because part of your feedback is also helping your students to prepare for the next um, assessment. So they, they need to know things that they can continue to do or to improve upon for that next project. Um, as a good rule of thumb, generally, feedback on an assignment should be um, provided in about one week uh, from the, the due date. That's a, a good rule of thumb if you're not sure how, how quickly you need to grade or how quickly you need to respond to your students. Um, that's just a general benchmark that may help you. Um, another way to, to maintain presence in your course um, is through frequent communication is by recording module overviews or videos um, that you can include in your course. So um, you can kind of see here in this example, I was using NIU's video platform, Kaltura. Uh, these videos can help students connect with you, the course, and it can demonstrate to students that you are personally invested in their learning. So again, even if you're doing a face-to-face -face course, you may still find Blackboard really useful for this type of thing. If students miss class, then they don't have to contact you to find out what they missed. Uh, they can go straight to their Blackboard course. If you ever have to reschedule, or if there's a snow day, uh, same thing. So, so you may find yourself still using um, some of these tools, even for a primarily face-to-face -face course, and certainly for online or hybrid modalities as well. You'll also want to establish a communication plan for your students. And so another best practice in communicating with students is to make sure that you respond, um, you know, within 24 to 48 hours. Establishing a communication plan, I do want to clarify, does not mean that you have to be on call 24 um, seven. It is, you know, reasonable that you get some downtime um, and that you don't have to respond immediately. So you can establish your communication plan early on, put it in your, in your syllabus, um, and let them know how you feel about communications. So another example of this would be that you only check your, your email in the afternoons. So you can invite students to email any time um, they have a question. Just let them know that you will be responding um, during the afternoon hours, that kind of a thing. You can also outline your personal expectations for communications. And this just means that your expectations should include um, what you expect from your students, but you can also think of it kind of like a contract and then they'll know what to expect from you as well. If you think it's necessary, you can even give them a sample um, email template uh, of what you expect them to use when they email you. Uh, this can help cut down on the amount of emails you receive that look a lot like text messages. Um, you can remind students that they need to include their first and last name, the, the course and the section number that they're enrolled in, uh, that type of a thing. You, you can make, make it known that you expect professional communications. Um, it, it should have you know, proper grammar, punctuation, that type of a thing as well. And just let them know that it, as you're you're demonstrating practice professionalism, it will prepare them for other uh, professional and academic uh, goals. 
The next one that I like is uh, thinking of the world as your own classroom. So your classroom is not just confined to the space that you meet in every week for class. It's not just confined to the LMS system or Blackboard, uh, but literally it's this idea that learning can happen anywhere and your students can go out into the world. They can kind of retrieve some of this information and they can, they can bring it back and, and share it. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to show students your environment and, and encourage them to, to share their environment with yours as well. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. If you, um, I'm trying to think of a, a good example here. We had one um, music instructor who asked our, their students to go and uh, record different noises, um, which they could all use for an actual music compilation. So uh, when people included their own environments, I think somebody was on a train, there was somebody else who was out in a windy field. Um, so that it was really just kind of this idea that not everything has to be provided for your students. They, they can also bring in the resources. You might just wanna assure them like no, no videos with a, a bed in the background. That was standard. Um, as far as technology goes, you may want to use discussion forums um, and class conversations to, to help insert this instructor presence. So discussions are a great way to keep students engaged in the course and with each other. So this one tool that you may see up on the screen here is called Yellow Dig, and we signed a contract with Yellow Dig, so you can request this if you want to use it in your course. Um, Yellow Dig is a discussion board that's rooted in gamification principles. So you set up the rules for your own discussion board and it will do some of the auto grading for you, which is um, particularly helpful if you have a large roster of students. Um, but it encourages students to interact in a discussion board uh, more organically. So you can give your students additional points if they're an early responder, as opposed to just waiting until the, the deadline. You can also assign points for students um, based on their replies to their peers. And they have different options for how they can respond to their peers. They can um, respond you know, with emojis, which would probably be for a lot fewer points, or they can actually respond with a text. Um, and then it also gives students kind of the freedom to self-govern self this conversation. They can, it doesn't have a, a strict, uh, topic and, and so then the students are able to to discuss and relate to whatever that week's uh, course content covers so if they find something particularly relevant in their notes or in their reading uh, they can bring this up in conversation here the other idea is in uh, blackboard ultra you can use discussion forms and and also class conversations. And so you might notice up in the top right corner, there's kind of like a little chat icon here. Um, if you enable class conversations, which is something that Blackboard uh, original does not have, it allows uh, students to, to talk um, informally and you can also chime in as well. So in my experience, it kind of emulates the natural conversation flow that you might observe in a typical face-to-face -face environment. So somebody could say, can you please remind me which case study this relates to? And anybody can chime in, um, but it's ungraded and, and it's just another method for, for people to engage in conversation. When it comes to communicating and interacting in discussion forums, um, you do kind of want to find this nice little balance here. So a nice way to think about it is that when you chime in on the discussion boards, you wanna show your students uh, that you are engaged and, and paying attention. So again, another rule of thumb is you'll wanna put um, some, some type of comment in there every um, one to, probably every one or two, I should say you should post once or twice per week, let me put it that way. Um, but if you over post, then students may rely on you to guide the conversation. Um, so you do want to make sure that they are the ones who are doing the bulk of the, the replies. Right. 
Um, another option here is you can require office hour meetings. And this is one that I would recommend you do fairly early on in the semester and then repeat it um, at a later date or later dates, depending on how often you want to do this. Required office hour meetings help your students to kind of break that that barrier where they, they feel self-conscious about um, coming to you, to talking to you and interacting with you. So when you require office hour meetings, maybe have an agenda. What are some things that you want to know from them as it, the semester progresses later on in the course? You can ask them to, to guide the conversation and they should come in with pre-prepared discussion topics. When you require office hour meetings, you can do this a variety of different ways. If you like meeting face to face, you can set aside time where they should come meet you in your office somewhere on campus. Um, you can always try to meet with them right after a face to face class lets out. Or if you're thinking about doing this virtually, we have um, an entire workshop that covers uh, all all the different things that you can do in a virtual office hours meeting, but you might consider sending them a link to meet you either in Blackboard Collaborate, Zoom, or Teams. I know we're going at kind of a, a fast speed here. Any questions so far? No? All right. Okay, we'll move on. So um, another thing that you can help to insert your instructor presence is to consider distributing a survey. And some instructors like to use this um, also as an attendance tool. And so they will ask their students to answer one or both questions. And um, students will have to write down their name on the sheet of paper, or you can do this again virtually uh, if this is an online environment but you ask your students what are you most interested in learning more about or what needs to be clarified what was confusing and then the instructor can use these quick you know survey poll results as a way to guide the next class period um, if there's a trend where everybody seemed to miss a certain topic you can go back and, and cover it or you can reach out to individual students who may need more help than others um, another option is you can distribute a, a survey that is anonymous and then students may feel more comfortable uh, revealing things that they are struggling with. So um, two different options and approaches to it each can work well. Um, you can also think about asking your students for um, some information early on in the semester. So kind of like a, a pre-survey and you can ask your students um, things like, what do you already know about this topic? Um, what do you think you're going to learn in this course? Um, things of that nature. And finally, a different type of survey, um, which is a little bit different than one that's related to course content, is you can distribute a survey to your students and ask them to identify uh, resources that somebody could potentially use um, to either succeed in this course or just to succeed overall academically. And the reason that I bring this up is instructors noticed during the pandemic that students uh, showed increased um, approval and, and happiness with their overall course structure when instructors took the time to um, designate some, some space in the course for uh, resources that might help them uh, in their day-to-day -day lives. So an example of this, I, I think during the pandemic was uh, one instructor just left this kind of as an open discussion forum and instructor, um, pardon me, and students were allowed to submit things uh, like where they could go if they needed an internet hotspot, if they were having connectivity issues. Uh, there was a place where people could distribute information about you know, free mental health services. There were things about tutoring. Um, I think there were even things about things like, uh, I think there was food drives and, and there was another one for uh, parents where they could pick up diaper donations and things of that nature. Um, so if we think about our students 
as a whole, not just the people who are enrolled in our class, but as adults and what things they need in their life to succeed in our class, um, we can greatly improve our instructor presence that way. And last one here is we also want to um, support our, our students learning, which I know I just kind of briefly touched on with that last one. Um, by thinking about our students and what they need for as far as campus services or even community resources. So again, consider having a section of your course dedicated to sharing these resources and just be proactive in pointing students to um, specific things that they can that they can utilize, um, such as, you know, do they know where to go for tutoring? Do, you, do they know where the writing center is located? Um, you know, if they have a test coming up, remind students about the DRC um, and what they can do to seek out accommodations. Uh, you can also target resources for specific students. So, uh, you know, if a student mentions to you that they are having problems with someone on campus, uh, you can link them to the ombudsman's um, person. So if students are having technical issues, you can point them to information technology or, or do it department. And, you know, if a student approaches you because um, their dead name is on the course roster. You can give them information that they need to change their names and their pronouns um, so that it doesn't happen again. You can also um, consider whether you have discipline specific resources that might be useful to students. So whatever the resources, just make sure that you're pointing out specific relevant resources regularly to your students. And again, like I said, tap on your students to help you update that list. Uh, they, they know a lot of resources out there and they're excited to contribute. And, you know, it will show students that you're present and invested in their success. Um, let me see. This next slide um, also shows a new tool that we have in Blackboard. So I, I don't know if any of you have seen this, but um, when you log into Blackboard, if you scroll down instead of just going straight to courses, if you scroll down, you'll see one that says new and it says Blackboard Assist. So we've now um, compiled a list of campus resources for our students. And the benefit of this is it's all kind of centralized in one location. Um, it is kept current and up to date. And so students can go through here and they can see, you know, just a list of services that are available to them. Um, so you may be interested in looking through this as well. Um, you can see it also from the instructor perspective. So um, consider adopting a place in your syllabus where you direct students to look at the uh, Blackboard Assist option. So I, I feel like I raced through that. I apologize. I, I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, but we are now at the place where we can go for Q&A. Are there any questions or specific strategies you're looking for? Um, I was wondering um, earlier on, you talked about like sharing your persona and social and, you know, um, instruction with the students. Like, so for my case, since I'm like a new instructor, should I be very transparent with students and say like, hey, I'm new too, and you know, we're both going to be learning a lot <laughs> this semester together. So like, is that something that's that should be opened up about or is that not really necessary? I think part of that depends on your comfort level. Um, you know, share what you what you want them to know about you. Um, if you want them to know that it's your first time teaching, you can tell them that. Otherwise, you can just say that you are a graduate assistant. Uh, you know, that's up to you how you wish to present that information. Um, mm -hmm. If you're uncomfortable with it, you know, think about other things that you would rather have them know about you. You know, what are the things uh, that you that make you unique um, and, and that you're bringing into the course? So part of it is what do you feel is appropriate um, and, and just part of it is what do you think your students would get from sharing that information mm -hmm. okay thank you sure do you have any other questions i'll go ahead and i'll stop the recording here